At a time when Americans, and indeed the world, search for sustainability, the impossible becomes possible. I saw a lot of hands earlier, and so those were all individuals who wished to speak in support of the project, is that correct? This is exciting. This is an amazing project. Any project that works towards the betterment of New Mexico really interests me. We wanted solar power, water reclamation, uh, as well as water catchment, and they're planning to do all these things. Because we are in an urgent crisis on energy and water and, and just a uh, way of life. Uh, in short, Oshara represents a template for creating healthy communities and will be a model not just for Santa Fe County, I believe, but the nation as a whole. It would be very nice to think that there's a place where I could live where my footprint would be very light. <laughs> Village is a model that's called nationally a new urbanist model, which is actually a misnomer. It's old urbanism that's been reborn. So what are the elements of a complete community? Well, I think it's important that a community have a center, that people know where to go if they want to meet their fellow citizens. Uh, the center is often a square, and people will go there when they feel they need company. Another requirement, and I think it is a requirement, is that the community be small. That most of the residents live within a five minute walking distance to the center. Because anybody who's outside of that radius will tend to drive. Take the five components of community and put them together within a walkable distance, you can dramatically reduce the amount of time and energy that people consume traveling. The community should be mixed use. Uh, there should be places to live and places to work and places to shop, at least your daily shopping. There should be a place to go to school, places to gather, you know, a meeting hall at least so that you can get together. When you break apart the five components of community, the only way to stitch it back together is with an automobile. We abandoned the highly connected street network uh, that was typical of the way that we used to build towns and cities. We thought that treating traffic in a modern way called for having only a single entrance into new development, arranging the commercial areas in long strips along the highway. And only after seeing this in practice for a couple of decades and large scale, have we realized that not only is this not a good way to arrange traffic, it's very likely almost the worst possible way that you could have arranged traffic. Subdivisions that have covenants that state you're not allowed to have a business, you're not allowed to have a, you know, a place to work, you're not allowed to have a restaurant or any kind of recreation. That is why Americans consume two to three to four times as much energy for transportation as anywhere in the world. Enormous energy. It's really a form that, that kills urban life and kills property values and hurts the economy. Zoning laws and inflexible covenants in these neighborhoods prevent the communities from evolving naturally. As streets experience higher traffic counts, they become less pleasant to live on, but make efficient business nodes within neighborhoods. Loosening those laws allow these neighborhoods to include decentralized shopping, dining, and working, making auto-dependent suburbs more pedestrian-friendly. Cities will be a lot more valuable if they follow principles uh, that are pleasing to the people. Making cities more beautiful, making suburbs more beautiful, creating community. We have to understand that th this isn't just an aesthetic movement. It's not something about nostalgia, about the past. It's about making cities reach their maximum capacity. Having uh, cities and the communities around cities successful. My background comes from the building of solar homes, and we have very carefully oriented homes within Oshara to take advantage of solar gain. So we're going to be working with the builders to build houses that have quite a bit of south-facing glass so that we can dramatically reduce the amount of energy that needs to be used to heat the homes. We're also going to be using uh, superior insulation products, which helps not only the house stay warm in the winter, but stay cool in the summer. An effect that actually increases quality of life because the houses are more comfortable. All appliances have to be Energy Star. 
We're recommending the use of super efficient lighting systems, mini fluorescence, LEDs. What we have done is looked at the costs of making these improvements and then we look at the long-term reduction in uh, operating costs and are only recommending those technologies which make financial sense today. We at New Village Institute became aware of the Oshara model and wondered what the real energy savings could be if people consciously chose sustainability. So we commissioned two studies designed to calculate just how much the energy savings could be for a family choosing to live in an energy efficient home in a mixed use community like Oshara Village. What we looked at were the possible savings in terms of home energy use and transportation. In the area of home energy, we examined heating and cooling, lighting and appliances, and domestic hot water. In the area of transportation, we looked at savings in miles driven and fuel efficiency. What we found was that the overall energy savings could be 58.7% for an Oshara resident choosing sustainability for their home and a fuel efficient car. This equates to reducing the carbon footprint by about 26,000 pounds of CO2 each year. This real world comparison shows that by consciously adopting sustainability features available off the shelf today, a family can save well over half of their energy needs, reduce greenhouse gas emissions while saving money and improving their quality of life. All of the water in Oshara will be reclaimed, purified and returned to each home and park for irrigation. Between reclamation and water conserving fixtures, a family in Oshara could use as little as half the potable water of a conventional home in a conventional subdivision development. So when you look at all of these differences between the, the conventional suburb and the enhanced new urbanist model, I think that there are five real benefits. When you live in a community where you walk to your garage, get in your car, drive to work, get out of your car and walk to your desk, and reverse that on the way back. You just don't get any exercise integrated into your daily life. And Oshara will begin to reverse that pattern because it does encourage substantially more walking. Energy is just skyrocketing in cost. Someone who buys an Oshara will not be subjected to this dramatic increase in energy costs. More free time. Uh, people in America often spend an hour to commute. And we believe that over half of the people that live in Oshara are going to work within walking distance, either within their homes or at the community college. It enhances our national security, which everybody benefits from. As we begin to see the instability in the energy markets around the world, it's becoming more and more important that we find ways to reduce our demand for energy. And if you can do it in a way that increases your quality of life, then that's all the better. The last one is it helps to protect the planet on which we all live. We've all heard more and more about global warming and the Oshara model is a method where we can cut your energy use anywhere between 30 and 60 percent depending how many of these elements you decide to incorporate into your life. And now Oshara is a reality. Our plazas hosted arts exhibits and community events and the families are moving in. Our water reclamation facility is already producing extra water so we can look at agriculture and energy production on site. With our walkable design, transportation alternatives and energy efficient homes, Oshara is a model for the next millennium.